There is a disease affecting humans worldwide at levels which we've never seen before. This disease is diabetes. It now affects 20% of the North American population. That's about one in five people. About 90 to 95% of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. The type that's highly associated with diet and lifestyle. And in fact, it's happening to people younger and younger. It used to be called adult onset diabetes, but now that kids are getting it, we have dropped that term and just call it type 2 diabetes. In fact, in children, it's a lot harder to treat, unfortunately. Now, there's two main factors that go underappreciated in relation to diabetes. The first one is fats. In 1992, the US government said fats are bad. And subsequently, two years later, the American Heart Association said we should begin avoiding fats. Now, when we give up one macronutrient, fats, we're going to have to replace the calories with something else. So what have people gone to? Carbohydrates. Now, if you've ever made a campfire, you know that when you start that campfire, you have to start with something that burns up really hot, really bright, but kind of dies down quickly, and that's the kindling. Once we get that fire going, we then put in that big piece of oak, and that burns really hot and really long. The kindling is like carbohydrates to our body, whereas the big piece of oak are like fats and proteins to our body. Now, when we do consume carbohydrates, it spikes our blood sugar, and we can't really handle that amount of glucose in the blood sugar, so we have an overreaction of insulin from the pancreas, which quickly brings it down. If we have these blood sugar spikes throughout our lifetime, our cells begin to say, hold up, stop bombarding me with insulin and glucose, I'm closing my doors. And that's called insulin resistance. The first step in the progression to diabetes. So the first key point here is to eat fat again. You know, these days, 60% of our diet is made up of carbohydrates. But our Paleolithic ancestors had a diet of about 5% of carbohydrate. Big difference. Our genes are based on our Paleolithic ancestors, so they can't really handle those high levels of carbohydrates. We want to bring back the good fats and decrease the simple and complex carbohydrates to help maintain blood sugar. The second item to discuss here is persistent organic pollutants. Well, firstly, what are in short form, these POPs. POPs are what we find in plastics, pesticides, herbicides, solvents like Varsol and other things that we might use around the house. And they are chemicals that put an extra load on the body. Now these persistent organic pollutants have been highly associated with diabetes. In fact, more than diet and lifestyle, which may come as a surprise to many of you. In fact, in the NHANE study, which has been going on for over 60 years, they discovered that when six or more persistent organic pollutants are found in people's bodies, they have a 38-time risk factor for getting diabetes. That's 3,800% more risk than the average person who doesn't have those persistent organic pollutants. So, an important part of this equation is to get rid of these persistent organic pollutants out of the body and also to prevent more from coming in. So we want to get the chemicals out but we also want to help our body to detoxify and what can we do to get that done? We can eat more fiber. Fiber binds up toxins in the body and helps us eliminate them. We can consume certain nutrients which help with the elimination of these POPs like vitamin C and selenium. Green juices, green drinks, and green herbs, chlorella, spirulina, are wonderful at binding up heavy metals and getting them out. And possibly the most important factor for getting out POPs is increasing our glutathione levels. Glutathione is the most important antioxidant in the body and actually declines as we age, so we have to keep our levels really solid. So these two underappreciated factors, eating more fats and getting rid of the persistent organic pollutants, can make a huge difference in decreasing our obesity rates.
Thank you so much for joining me. The best way to get started is to get started.